good morning. Thank you, AJ and Jacques, for that intro. So yes, we're talking about Bay Area artist Joan Brown. She was an American figurative painter who lived and worked in Northern California. And she was a member of what's known as the second generation of the Bay Area figurative movement. Uh, Brown was born on February 19th, 1938 in San Francisco. She studied at the California School of Fine Arts, now known as the San Francisco Art Institute. And she achieved prominence with a style of figurative painting that combined bright color, sometimes cartoonish drawing, and personal symbolism. Her first museum show occurred at the Whitney Annual Show in New York in 1960 when she was just 22 years old, and she was the youngest artist to be exhibited that year. So right now, as AJ mentioned, there's a retrospective of her work at the Orange County Museum of Art, and some of the SMA staff got the chance to go see her work in person. So this is the exhibit's cover image. And in a way it's a bit meta because as you walk through this exhibit, you stand looking at the paintings of people standing and looking at paintings, or I guess in this case, Egyptian hieroglyphics. Luxury Liner was created in 1973 and Brown was known firstly as a painter, but also was skilled in sculpture. She enjoyed swimming and the ocean, and these themes popped up in different ways throughout her work. She was also a member of a group of women who sued several swimming clubs in San Francisco to admit women. Blake likes this piece in particular because it reminds him of a high school project that he did. And AJ was drawn to this piece's playful and creative childlike energy. Art critic Bo Rutland says of this piece, New Year's Eve number two shows a woman and a skeleton tangoing under a city skyline, assuredly ushering in the new year. Keenly aware of the absurdity of being alive, Brown painted our chaotic world exactly as she saw fit. And Jacques, li Jacques likes this piece because it combines his love of arts and music. Animals were a common theme and motif in Brown's art, particularly later in her career. She often drew cats or fish, both of which can be seen in this painting that Lucky liked. The absurdity and abstraction of it reminded him of some of Frida Kahlo's work. On the, on the left, a painting of dogs that draws some resemblance to AJ and Liz's dog, Buddy. Part of Brown's signature style was incorporating bright splashes of color, and this piece really exemplifies that. This painting reminded the group of the uncanny and creepy expressions of the recently released horror movie called Smile. Another painting involving fish and cats. This was Blake's favorite because the artist captured not only her image, but also these major themes in her life at the time of painting. Brown had many pets throughout her life, often painting them as subjects as we've seen but her cats and dogs were among, amongst her prized family members. And she even suggests that she is part cat, alluding to her feline nature. Lucky interprets this piece as showing the courage that every woman has within themselves. And I love that. It shows our juxtaposed sun and moon selves. Liz's choice likely comes from a period in Brown's career where she drastically changed her painting style. This piece looks quite different than some of the others that we've just looked at. In 1965, she steered away from her bright colored large scale paintings and focused on more muted earth tones and less spontaneous subject matter. And this is likely due to her disintegrating marriage at the time and later her divorce in 1966. Tanya liked this piece because she felt the subject's facial expression in her soul. And I couldn't agree more. I think this would be my choice um, as well of Brown's work. And here she really showcases again, her playfulness with color and as well with pattern in this piece. Brown often painted figures and animals in fanciful scenarios while taking inspiration from her own life. Dancers in the City is Susanna's favorite piece. After floundering with painting a floral dress, Joan Brown decided to instead paste scrap fabric to the female's dress in this painting. And it just goes to show that a little creativity goes a long way. 
Pauline mentions that this painting stands out because of the peculiar way the clouds were painted. They're unusually round, as well that it consists of these two canvases of different sizes. I personally like this piece because of the way Brown plays with highlight and shadow. The highlights on the people's faces and on their shoes really draws me in. And also the texture that she added to the dog's fur makes it kind of blend into the bushes at first glance. Dick poses a thoughtful question when looking at the cosmic nurse. Is the cat pulling her to stop her from leaving or is she pulling the cat with her? And these are just the kind of questions that make it so interesting when looking at figurative painting of this nature. Here's some photos of the SMA team at the exhibit and they even had areas to create your own figurative sculptures in the style of Joan Brown. The Orange County Museum of Art says that Brown's style and career charted the turns and devotions of a vision that was once dismissed by critics as unserious, but was rooted firmly in impassioned curiosity and research and remains uniquely compelling today. If you're in Orange County or visiting soon, you can see the Joan Brown exhibit for free until June of 2024. Thank you.